Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Revise Auth, a new tool from Chris over at GoRails. This is built on some 7.1 beta features, including the has secure password, the generates token for, and the authenticate by, as well as a couple other helper methods that we're getting in 7.1. This is basically an alternative to device that's going to be a lot easier to customize uh, because it's so like low level to the actual framework. Uh, with Devise, a lot of the customization can be a little bit complicated just because of all of the stuff it does for you. It does make it a bit more involved when you want to like add something or change something. Here, this is going to be very simple to, to get into and modify, which is going to allow you to make it your own a lot more easily. So let's go ahead. Let's just do this real quick because it really doesn't take that long or it shouldn't. We can go ahead and let's do a Rails new video. We'll CD into that video and then we can, uh, we'll do this and, and CD into video and, and code dot looks like my terminal history is totally messed up right now. And then this should allow us to actually create this app. Alrighty. It looks like that's done. Let's go ahead and let's do this real quick. Let's start with a rails G controller pages home, just to create a quick little homepage we can mess around with. Then we can do a Rails, or let's do a bundle add for revise auth. That'll add that gem to our gem file for us. And then just real quick, make sure you're checking which version of Rails you're on. You want to be on at least 7.1. In my case, it looks like I'm on RC2. Uh, and then we can do a Rails G revise auth uh, model for a user. And then there's other options you can add here. So in that case, I had the first name, last name, like in the readme, uh, but we can also add some other stuff. We could say like, maybe we want a username that is unique, something like that. We'll just go ahead. It'll generate that uh, model for us along with the username, which is really nice uh, to at least have that. We can then do a DB colon migrate, just like we normally would. And then the only other thing we have to do here, hopefully, is come into our config and our routes.rb. And in here, we just want to say uh, revise auth, and then we can save that. And then uh, I think there's a way to do a Rails G revise, uh, what is it? Rails G revise auth views, I think, should generate those views for us as well. So if you want to come in and you want to customize these, you can just come into your views, revise auth, registrations, whatever, and just very quickly customize these. Pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and let's do a Rails S to start our server and come into our routes real quick and set the root to be the pages controller home action. And then we can refresh the home page hopefully and get effectively the same thing we just had. Cool. So now let's go ahead and let's come into our app, our uh, pages and our home page. And then let's also do, let's do one more. Let's call this like dashboard, dashboard.html.erb. And then let's come into our controllers, pages, and let's just very quickly create a dashboard route just so that we have something to work with. Let's come into our routes, oops, our routes file real quick. And we can actually just copy this line and let's do dashboard just so that we have uh, another link to mess around with. So let's come into our dashboard page, give this a H1 that just says dashboard. And then let's give this a link to the root path. And this will go to the root path like that. That'll allow us to navigate back to the home page. And then on the home page, we'll do a link to the dashboard, which will take us to the pages dashboard path, I think is how this should be structured. Let's refresh. There we go. And now we can go back and forth. So that seems to be working. Cool. Okay. So now what I want to do on the home page here is I want to, uh, on the home page, say, if we are signed in, so we'll say, uh, if, uh, signed or if user signed in i want to show the dashboard link uh else i want to do something else and then we'll just say end so we'll say not signed in and then well we already know that one signed in if it's showing us that link if we refresh we can see this currently says not signed in so that's pretty cool let's go ahead and let's do a link to uh, login which will take us to the new or sorry this will just take us to the login path now i guess right uh, is it login? Yeah, it looks like it's login. So that just takes us straight to the login page, which is pretty cool. Let's also do a link to create account, and this will take us to the sign up path, I think. And then we can refresh this one. It looks like it's not the sign up path, but that's okay. We can actually go over, oops, we can go over to localhost port 3000 slash rails slash info slash routes. And we can see right here, it is the sign up, but there is an underscore between sign and up. That's my fault. Spelling is incredibly hard sometimes. 
So now we can come over here and create this account. Just put in a little pipe right there so it's a bit easier to see. Create account, and that should take us here. But it looks like we don't have a confirmation token, which is weird because it should be creating that for us. This was working yesterday when I tried this. Let's come into the lib. Um, I guess it's going to be under revise auth model, I want to say. If we come into our user rb we can see revise auth model so this should be in the model here uh, the model should say it has a confirmation token has secure token confirmation token so i don't know why we're getting this error let's just do a rails g migration add confirmation token to users and then we can just come over here and come into our db i guess we're doing a little bit of hot fixing but that's fine this shouldn't be an issue. I'm probably just doing something wrong, but I'll show you a quick way to fix this. We'll just give this a confirmation token of type string. Uh, and I actually wanna do, let's do like a add index to the users for the confirmation token where it's unique true. Copilot knows what I want. And then we can say uh, something like, I don't know, this ensures uh, the, let me hit F11 that the confirmation token is unique for each user or something. I don't know. We'll just do something like that. That seems fine. And then let's do a Rails DB colon migrate. Uh, hopefully this works. I have no idea. Let's do a Rails S again. And then let's refresh and we'll see. So that seems to have done something. Uh, let's do Dean at example.com with a password of password. And we should see this fail. Uh, because the default for the revise auth, I believe, is 12 characters, which we can see right here, validates length of password 12 characters minimum instead of the default of eight. And that's generally because currently, I believe, NIST password requirements already have it in my history. I think the standard, the minimum standard is eight characters, but what they're advising people to do uh, moving forward is to increase the minimum length of the password because it's generally more secure to have more characters than it is to have uh, symbols added mostly because symbols tend to make it easier to guess the password for example if your requirement is eight characters plus a symbol most people are probably just going to put an exclamation mark after the word password which is a lot easier to guess than 12 random possible characters that are just you know letters right so that's uh, probably the logic here for the minimum of 12. So what we want to do instead of just typing password, we're just going to go with uh, password one, two, three, four. <laughs> Again, you're not here to learn security practices for me. Uh, but now that I've logged in, I can go over to the dashboard path. So let's come back to the home page real quick and just say if we're logged in, we want to have a link to the logout path which when we click on this is gonna tell us no route matches this because we do need to give this a method of delete uh, just like you would normally do. But we also wanna change this to a button to as opposed to what we have. And then let's come back to the home page, And now we have the logout button, which will log us out. We can then log in again with dean at example.com and a password of password one, two, three, four. Okay, so that seems fine. Now what I want to do is in our pages controller, I want to restrict this uh, to be something like, you know, require a uh, authentication if you try to go to a specific path. So it's not really covered here. The only thing that's covered is like your after login path, which is also important to do. Maybe you want to redirect someone to the dashboard page after you log in, which we can do real quick. If we come into our application controller, you can just do after login path, let's go to the pages dashboard path instead, right? Like this. And now I think if I log out and then log in with Dean at example.com and a password of password one, two, three, four, that'll take me to the dashboard path. So that's pretty simple to set up. But okay, what I wanna also do is say, if we come in here, I want this to have a before action and we'll see if we have the authenticate user for the dashboard path so let me click on dashboard so you can see here nothing seems to be happening but if i log out uh, and then i go over to slash pages slash dashboard you'll see it redirects me to the login path so you have that exact same helper you would have had previously works just like a charm and then we can once again log in with password one two three four and it takes us to our dashboard path 
So again, because it's a newer tool, you're probably gonna have to do a little bit of digging right now to figure out how things work. So let me just walk you through the GitHub repo so you can find what things you need to look for, right? If you come into the app, you'll see that the mailers and the views already exist here. You can, of course, customize the views as you want to and use the mailer how you want to. That's pretty standard. The controllers are just going to be your basic controller at the top, which just has the name and then your actual controllers right here, like your registrations controller. And you can see here a lot of the stuff is pretty simple, mostly because it's just the logic that's required with Rails 7.1 now to do your authentication. It's just been uh, wrapped a little bit and has a little bit of extra polish on top of it. But it's pretty bare metal at this point with how Rails is, is planning to be structured, is my understanding, which is gonna make it a lot nicer to work with, I think. So you can come in here, you can mess with all the controllers if you need to look at those. You can go, also come into the root, go to the lib, and then you have your revise auth, which is gonna have your different models. And of course you have your, your model.rb right here, which is what your user is gonna be using. And then you also have your current.rb, which is where you have your um, like your current user stuff is what you can think of it. So that gets stored in this model. It's always good to dive into these these tools like this, especially if they're smaller, because it's a really easy way to just quickly see like how things could be structured. And a lot of this is going to translate also to how you could structure your own app, maybe not in the lib folder particularly, but you can come in here, you can look at like the current.rb and you can say, oh, so this is how you would use, you know, a, a current, um, singleton to uh, you know like have just one instance of things in your application but anyways that's going to do it for this video i just wanted to quickly cover this because i thought it was cool to have a new authentication solution that actually just works out of the box uh, except for whatever i managed to misconfigure so thank you so much for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one